It's time for our first hot topic on the breakfast. I want to take a look at the size of this government. Tinubu appears to be ignoring calls president. Bola Tinubu, uh, for a lean government, as his cabinet size near 70. Uh, OBJ, former president, Olusegun Obasanjo, had 30 ministers. Uh, former president, late Umar Erodua, had 39 ministers. Former president, Goodluck Jonathan, he had 37. Uh, but here we are looking at one that's about 70. Well, let's talk about that with Joe Femi Daguro. He's a founder of Lagos Forum. Good morning to you, Joe. Good morning. Glad to have you. Yeah, good to be here. So what's your take on the size of the portfolio of the cabinet we're seeing in front of us? It probably may rise. Well, actually, uh, I've said it uh, somewhere before that uh, it's a prerogative of the president to choose uh, his ministers but, and the people that work with him. That, that should, if there's no law uh, to guide against uh, increase or decrease in number of ministers, then he may be doing something right, unless there's a law. Uh, and if there's a law prohibiting this number, because we have to look at what the law says. If the National Assembly uh, agrees with him on this, then he must be doing something right. But if the law says, look, look, you can't have it. But if the law allows him to do what he's doing right now, then nobody can stop him. From your, no uh, from your investigation, does the law give him an open check to decide how many people he wants to work with? Well, from my understanding, like I said, I'm not a lawyer, but then uh, he must choose from all the states. And now, if we have 36 plus 1, that's about 37. So, if he has to choose from all the states, that means minimum you will have 37. And if you have a minister of states or all these other ministers, junior minister, add another 37 to it. So, there must be something fundamentally wrong somewhere. And until when that is corrected, you know, we can say what we want to say, but, I mean, why is it choosing this large number? There must be a reason for it. And I think these are the things we should be able to ask the presidents or the presidency so that they give a clue to this. Rather than for us now, if we discuss it and it comes out and tell us this is what I want to do, this is what the law says, then we'll find ourselves in a situation whereby we can't defend ourselves again. So I was trying to get across to one or two people in the government to find out. But now it, it was impossible because I got this information to appear on this program a little bit late. So these are the things we have to investigate. And once we investigate it and we find out that the president has not done anything wrong or he has done something wrong, we'll begin to take him on that. I think that's the thing we have to look into first. All right. Well, Nigerians are concerned because we are... When you look at the economy and how the nation is struggling, Nigerians have said, look, let's cut down on government expenses. Let's reduce the cost of governance in this country. And so when they see this kind of this size, you know, they, they get alarmed naturally, whether the law allows it or not. Do you not agree with Nigerians who are saying, look, cut down the cost of governance and let's see that things are not bloated as they've been in the past. I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. I agree with that. Uh, there are so many ministries that can be merged. Uh, there are so many positions that can be, I mean, cut off completely. You know, and if we begin to look at that, where do we get the money? You know, if we say we are going to be borrowing and we are going to borrow, because we are not running a surplus economy. It's a deficit. And if we're running a deficit economy, and that means we might still borrow more until we have that surplus. We don't have the surplus now, unless the statistics are wrong. So if we don't have the surplus, and Orosoye report has said, look, let's cut this. And why is it that even the past government have not been able to do the right thing? So we have to begin to look at it and say, look, what is really wrong? And that is why I'm saying the National Assembly has to consider a lot of things. You see, the people, I mean, that is people like us in the public. And when we say, oh, this is what we think about the government. This is what we think should happen. In most cases, it, it's not going to change things. And that is why uh, there should be a mechanism whereby the people will listen. How many senators or rep or representatives are, are, are having, I said it, a place where you can, you know, drop your opinion? 
unlike where we took this uh, democracy from, you had to have the opportunity to, to reach your, your representatives again. You know, so there must be a place we can reach out to them in a very, you know, comfortable a way that we can say, look, this is what we feel about this country. This is what we think. So except the few of us that we can speak. So let's begin to find a grassroots uh, movement, a grassroots organizations that we can say. So we have a lot of NGOs that are working that are saying things about this. But has it made a change? So it, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenon, it's a problem that has to be solved. And I just hope maybe this time around, the, 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 the assembly men and women can listen to it and begin to look at it. Look, in the last uh, government, you discovered that before the names of ministers were submitted, it took quite a while. So now they passed a law. I mean, it is true that same government that said, look, within 60 days, look, something has to be done. Because you know when you are coming into this government, you need to have ministers. That should have been uh, a kitchen cabinet, they call it, to have you know selected some people and say, look, this is what I want to do. So it shouldn't take you even 60 days to be able to submit this list. But that is politics. You know, there will be uh, discussions, there will be issues here and there. And, you know, all this thing is about friendship and loyalty. So the party members, we want to have their say as well. I mean, because it is not just the president alone. There will be people who are supporting him to make decisions. So unless a lot of things have to change, unless people have to have an orientation whereby they have to understand that government has to be uh, effective and functional. But if this is what the law says, I repeat, that you must have a minister from all uh, the states, then there should be something wrong somewhere. And then not only that, you have the civil societies, you have other people that say women must take, you know, this affirmative action of 25 or 35 percent. You have issues that will say, no, uh, the Christian must occupy certain positions, the Muslim must op occupy certain positions. But let's look at the reality. We should be talking about fixing issues right now. We need a vibrant foreign affair policy at this critical time in Africa, in the world. So these are the things we should consider and not to be able to just uh, be talking all over the time. And, you know, who is going to be what? The, the Foreign Affairs Ministry needs a minister right now. Every other portfolio we have to consider it as critical. The Works Ministry, the Health Ministry. Let's fix these things and let's move on with governance. And that is the, 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 the most important issues now. Then you still have to now be guessing who is going to be the minister of what? Who is going to be the minister of state? Who is going to be the minister, the senior minister, the junior minister? There are a lot of issues. And I believe the government uh, of Bola Metinumbu uh, will be working, you know, to see things done properly. Look at the strike, the way it was handled. I'm looking at the way he's been doing things for a while. And I'm looking at the, uh, the competence and the finesse in handling some of these issues. So if we are looking at the practicality and the flexibility of the governance, and, and now let's bring in transparency into it, and let's bring clarity into all this, then I think we must be doing something right. Okay. Until, that's why I'm saying we have to give chance. We have to give him the chance of, let's wait and see. You know, how is he going to pay? Then it's a different question. How is, who is going to occupy what? Those are the things that are critical right now. So mm. once we fix it, you see, look at our foreign affairs policy that I talked about. Mm. The Chad issue, the Niger issue, uh, all these West African countries, Burkina Faso, Mali, and all of that. These things are happening right now, and they depend on us. And Nigeria is the president or the chairman of ECOWAS. So when we look at it right now, there's a lot of issues going on. Time should have moved past what we experienced in the last government, where it's only a big that was running around the place uh, with NITCOM uh, and, and representing the government in most cases. We had the, in then, we couldn't even had we hardly had the voice of the foreign affairs minister. So things have to change, and that is why it's efficiency, it's transparency. It wasn't, it was it, was it even only Abika Debri, you had the foreign affairs minister, you had Neymar, you had, there was so much duplicity. Exactly. There was so much duplicity. It's part of what we had hoped will be changed in, with this administration. Okay, well, let's look at the list. You've seen the list, you've seen the names. We've had, uh, we've seen about nine go ex-governors there. Would you say that looking at that list, that there is hope that this team is well put together or you have doubts about their ability to deliver and move this country forward? 
the, the only thing we can do, the only thing I can say is to be cautiously optimistic about some of these things. While I don't want Nigerians to lose their optimism and not to lose uh, their, their, their mind about some of these things going on, is just to be cautiously optimistic. And that is it. You see, politics is about relationship among the politicians. It's about friendship. It's about loyalty. It's about, yes, you supported me. I'm there for you. And I think even all these nine uh, governors, you know, if they are sincere to themselves and to this nation, I, I want to believe that it's a, the, a great opportunity for them to really come out and serve. They've made enough money if, they, if it's about money. They've gained enough publicity and popularity if it is about that, it's about, if it's about fame. So if you have been brought into the system right now, it should be about the greatest service you can give. So if they don't see this as the greatest opportunity, even to correct their past, whatever it is, then there's something wrong with our system. There's something wrong with us as people. And that is where we can com continue to complain and you know, possibly raise our voices to say, no, this is not what we voted for, and to correct this anomaly. But for now, there's nothing we can do as people. It is the job of the president to select the people he wants to work with. And that, that's, the, that's the sad truth. No matter what we say, it, it doesn't change the mind of, of the of the people who is going to work or the man who is going to choose who is going to work with him. These are supposed to be in the private sector. You choose some people to work with you, and then they work with you, and and that is it. The CEO has the right to choose, and the HR they will come together to say, look, these are the people we want to you know hire. Even if there are some people in house, they can still go out and bring in external people to to run the show. So I'm looking at it from that angle. This man has his prerogative to do that and to bring in people to work with him. And until when we see these people doing something silly, look at when Baba Today Fashola was there, he did the best he could. The mistake was maybe giving him two portfolios at the same time, but later on he has to you know, take one. So there will be mistakes that will be made, maybe and possibly so, and then it should be corrected because we don't have the time to continue to make mistakes. We don't have the time to continue to explain the situation to ourselves. We, not only that the foreign, uh, the, the foreign countries are, or the, our allies are looking at us, we are looking at ourselves critically right now. And that is the good thing about that. We have to have a minister of finance that will be able to talk to the uh, central bank governor, not the last administration whereby the minister of finance is saying something, the governor, the central bank governor will disobey whatever and they will invite him to the status, uh, to their Assembly, uh, the Senate we invite, he will not go. So there will be there was lawlessness, practically lawlessness, disobedience, you know, to law and all that. So now we should try to avoid that and see and um, see that we have a sane government. We have a government that can listen to people. And I think this is what we should be watching out for. You know, and th that's my opinion. We need people now to come in and do the right thing. And the right thing may cause pain. <clears throat> You know, even when you are telling the people not the truth, it, it is painful sometimes to listen to truth. But then, what can we do to bring our country to the place we want it to be? It's our job, well, and that is where we're you, doing you, it. You're saying that perhaps these governors uh, it would be able to perform. Uh, but Nigerians are saying, some Nigerians are saying, it's already a bad signal that these governors, some of them immediate past governors, who probably should be under the radar of the EFCC right now, to account for some of the things they did in their state, you're giving them portfolios. I'll read out some of the governors that are here on, on that list. Uh, you, have, you have former governor Simon Lalong. He was a lawyer, served as two-term governor of Plateau State from 2015 to 2023. All right? So you have Mohammed Badaru, um, an accountant, an immediate governor, a former governor of Jigawa State from 2015 to 2023. You have Ibrahim Gaidam, who is incumbent senator of Yobe East Senatorial District. He was the immediate past governor of Yobe State. Then you have Abubakar Bagudu, uh, Abubakar Atiku Bagudu is the immediate past governor of Kebi State. You have Belo Matawale, he's the immediate past governor of Zamfara State. You have David Umahi, he's, a, uh, uh, he's previously served as two-term governor of Ebony State from 2015 to 2023. All right? 
So you have Nasser and Rafai. He's the former governor yeah. of Kaduna State. So when you have, not forgetting the very popular one, Nisam Wike, former governor of River State. So Nigerians are saying, is it not, is it not a bit too much to bring all these immediate past governors and give them portfolios as ministers? Well, unfortunately, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do. I repeat again, the law, they've not been convicted. You know, they've not been taken before the court of law and they've not been convicted. And number two, they are not having immunities anymore. So they can still be picked up. They can still be invited. They can still be interrogated. There's no immunity covering them because you're a minister of the Federal Republic of Nigeria does not guarantee you, you, you can be arrested, you can be queried. No. So if the law allows that, you see, it's unfortunate that, you see, most of us, uh, we don't... There is a thing you. as the power of incumbency. Yes, they are not the president, but the president who put them in there can very well cover them, can't he? <laughs> in, if, that, in case there are some things that are lingering that and the, hanging that, over their heads. That is, that is our thoughts. That is the thoughts of Nigerians. That is the thoughts. We all have that thought. And say, so look, why is, this people, why is this guy there? I will say the same thing. But at the end of the day, uh, for this purpose of intelligence and, and real discussions, we have to now say, listen, unless we have to look at what the law says. If the law says, look, <clears throat> excuse me, you are covered, then we say, oh, it's covering them. Whether we like it or not, whether you are a minister or not, if you are a, fresh, a good friend, a loyal friend of the president, there are certain things that will benefit from being loyal to your friends, from being loyal to the president, from being loyal to the governor. It, it's not even all that. If you are loyal to a good friend in good position, there are things you will benefit from it. So you don't need to be a minister to have a good benefit from the minister or to, from the president or from the governor or from the chairman of local government. No, it's all over the place, even in the private sector. So this is what I'm saying. Unless we want to feed the masses with wrong information, which we should not do, which are we not do, which you will not do. But the point is this. If the law permits it, then it's free. But if the law says, look, for the fact that you are there, you can still be investigated. You can still, even in America, I said that because this is where we took this kind of democracy from. We saw Britain, we didn't go for that parliamentary thing. We saw Germany, we saw all over the place. We went from where we think we can, I mean, we want to enjoy all the benefits of good things in life, where you have uh, the, 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 the rep and the, uh, and, the, and the cynic. So it's allowed. You see, uh, uh, Trump will bring friends who are even who cannot win the election in their state all over the world. Obama would do, did the same thing. Uh, uh, this other guy here, we did the same thing. Even in UK, in Germany, name it in Europe, they do the same thing. Your friends cannot win election. Bring him to be a special advisor or a minister. So what? The only thing most of our people, most of Nigerians are looking at. So these guys are going to sit down there again and be collecting money for doing nothing. And they are collecting whatever they have uh, planned for themselves after retirement. That is scary and that is annoying to people. And I think most of them will begin to write, like uh, I think Edbenga Daniel wrote it, and I think uh, maybe Oshiamole will say, Look, is that? So a lot of them will begin to say, uh, Look, look, Oshiamole was a former chairman of uh, APC. So they, he was a former NLC leader, a former governor, and a, now a senator. So there is no law prohibiting them not to have these positions. And unless there's a law for that, these people are free to be ministers, they are free to even contest uh, election, to be to aspire to be uh, the president of Nigeria. So we have to see, whom do we vote as president? Whom are we going to vote as governor in future? And so that we begin to ask questions. When people come to campaign, they don't even tell us. Most of them don't tell us their manifestos. Most of them don't tell us what they will do. Most people just say, when I get there, this is what I will do. But they don't do it. And that they will tell you later, that is campaign audacity, where you can promise and not to fulfill. So unless we begin to, the, the masses, the people, the Nigerians that we talk about, our Nigerians, you know, we should be able to find a way and come together to be asking question not to be taken away with uh, a bag of gari or a bag of beans or you know the recharge cards and stuff like that you know you don't see in other countries uh, around the world where you know senators will be distributing uh, machines or gari or frying pans and, and all that you don't see that you are chosen on your true representation but here it's, 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 it's a different ball game you know you know what is constituency allowance do we ask them 
Where is the constituency allowance? What you, are you doing with the constituency allowance? Let us ask questions that we make them think, oh, these people are beginning, oh, what about the primary health center here? What have you done with it? You know, the other day I went to a primary health center sometime at night. I saw them. The road to the place was bad, and then the doctors were there. No, no, no security provided. And here you are. You, you see, you provide a security for some madams and, and some personality. You call them celebrity or personality, carrying their bags and umbrella. And that's why you see sometimes they kidnap the doctors. Because we don't provide security in, the, in those places. We have to think about that. And these are the things that, you know, we should be talking about. How do we get, you know, when, when a government uh, comes to power, uh, whether a president or governor, and say, look, I'll provide job for 100 million people or one, 10 million people. Do you know what 10 million people means to say you want to provide a job? But then when they say you provide a job for 10 million people, you don't give time frame. So you just say, I'll provide. So even if it is the next four years, well, we're still expecting the 10 million people. So these are promises made that cannot be fulfilled. And you are not seeing the chances of these 10 million people. You said people will have a loan to complete their education. Fantastic idea. But now, who is going to man that ministry? These are critical questions. You know, and students will begin to resume maybe in October. You know, and then it, it, it has brought a, a system whereby the university has the freedom to you know, increase their school fees. So we should be addressing those things. I think that those are the questions we should be prepared to ask and ask for the answers so that students can go back to school comfortably well. And the process of loan, how will it be like? How long will it take for a student to get a loan or scholarship, if that should be the case? Well, we should uh, be asking people. Well, according to the Nigerian constitution, there must be at least one cabinet member from mm. each of the 36 states of the country. Right. But, you know, when you say there's nothing we can do about it, there's nothing we can do. It's, it's important that we have these conversations, right? And it's important yeah. also that we're able to relate to members of the National Assembly who are supposedly representing us. We should be able That's to say I'm to doing. them, look, we are not happy with this aspect of our life as a people. Can you do something about it? Can a bill be enacted? Can, can you sponsor a bill uh, to change this or sponsor a bill to add this to the things we are having to deal with or to remove that from some of the things we're dealing with. So when you say there's nothing we can do about it, it, make us, it makes us seem so, um, so helpless in a democracy that we're in. Listen, I say that because from my own experience, I've tried at some point to have a conversation, to have a meeting with a senator I got to his office and I tell you, I couldn't believe that it was even his office. And somebody, you know, uh, carefully told me that he doesn't come to this office. So that's what I'm saying. What do you want to do? You want to go to his house? Do you, you call him? He doesn't pick your call. So what do you really want to do? That's, it seems we are helpless. Yes. If you have an office where you can meet or you can drop a letter, look at some of them, there are emails they don't even read. It. Some of them, I'm, you know, there might be some who are really good at, you know, uh, going through mails and SMS and, and whatever, who are having uh, assistance, special assistance, or who can handle this issue. But where you can't see them to discuss with them, where you can't even send a mail and get a response, then something is wrong. I agree. I said that earlier. Let's find a place. Let's talk. How do you talk to them? The guy sits down in Abuja and is representing me in Lagos State. And he has an office. And you go to the office. Even the office is locked up in most terms. And when you see the guy there or the lady there, he said, look, sorry, your guy is not around. So what next can you that do? That tells us a lot about the quality of people we have in public offices, doesn't it? And yeah, that also tells us a lot. That also tells us a lot about why... Why coup is becoming a thing on the continent? Does it? No, no. You see, uh, we shouldn't take it that far. Coup is senseless, right? We can do things without having coups. Uh, it, it doesn't, you see, uh, I think no, no place in the world that uh, you want to have a military government. No, it doesn't, it doesn't at all. Completely no, no. You see, the thing is this, we shouldn't be uh, even given the opportunity to talk about that to them because, you see, these people, they were there before. 
for the fact that, you know, your friend has gone and you want to bring another person in or you feel you have to go in there to take your own share of the of the cake, uh, it, that is not it. We have never seen whereby you said you want to do something. They, people want to change government, but please, let's get another election. You know, we can recall these people. There is a process to recall. We can, you know, people are protesting peacefully. There's so many things you can do. You know, you can, you know, you can set the mass representation through lawyers and all that. So that we should, that's why I'm saying we should find avenue to express ourselves. But it shouldn't be that uh, what's going on in all these smaller countries. You know, Nigeria, we can't even, I think, I'm no, nobody, Femi, Femi, nobody, nobody is calling for a coup. But we're saying yes. that those who have been entrust, entrusted with democracy should handle it with the diligence that it's required so that they do not give room for, for the military boys, as they are called, to come in and disrupt democracy. That's what we're saying. I think this time around, uh, most people in the military, uh, they want a flourishing democracy. Yes, they want it because it, it pays every one of us. It gives everybody the opportunity to live uh, the life we want to live. Uh, but we have to always checkmate our lawmakers. We have to always checkmate our, our, our local government chairman. Let's start from the local government. We have to Let's continue with conversations such as this so that these people we hear, us. I imagine they watch television, listen to radio, read the newspapers to know the voice of the people, to hear the voice of the people and know, uh, feel the pulse of the people people and begin to take their constituency offices seriously and the constituency project that they're supposed to be in, you know, handling seriously and listen to the people that they claim to be representing. Thank you so much, Joe Femi Dagoro, uh, for your time on our first yeah, hot topic. Enjoy the day. You too. Joe Femi Dagoro is the founder of Lagos Forum and he's been our guest on the first hot topic. We'll take a break and come back for our second hot topic. Stay with us.